I'm also an artist, but I'm also an archaeologist with a special interest in museology and heritage museum. So I thought, since Shamini is also here, I'm also an artist, I'm not going to talk about the exhibition as such, because my reading of the exhibition will be very, very biased, you know, as artists are supposed to be. Because when artists try to be neutral and very reasonable, they end up making very boring works. Because that's the whole contribution an artist can do to the civilization is to approach the world intuitively and let the world become through yourself rather than using your logic way too much. Well, we'll come to, I'm not going to talk about the exhibition, but I might. But you know what I thought, considering my unfortunate fate that which made me both an artist and an archaeologist. I said unfortunate, I never meant to be an, uh, wanted to be an archaeologist or a museologist, but I ended up being one. I want to actually controlling most of Sri Lankan archaeological field uh, resources right now from Sigiri to Dambulla to many places anyway. So, I thought What's a museum for and what does it do would be a better way to talk, you know, to put my ideas into you for your, your critical attention. And because this is called, it's not just an exhibition, you know. See, you know, it's, it's a museum of modern and contemporary art. So we come to, you have come to, not to see just one exhibition, you have come to see, come to the museum of modern and contemporary which is called an art museum. And when you say art museum, there is another museum, which is called the National Museum. And then you have museums in Anuradhapura, uh, Polonnaruwa, uh, Sigiriya. They are not art museums. They are historical museums or archaeological museums. So, to begin with, firstly, the idea of the museum and the idea of art museum in, in relation to historical museums. It's a very different uh, different things, but at the same time sharing a common history. Let me first problematize the very idea of museum. You know, museums are artificial institutions. Say, you take a school, even in the prehistoric period, there was this uh, didactic or like, you know, pedagogic relation between the hunter and the, and the kid who is still not a hunter. So learning, teaching the next generation is began from wherever the human civilization began. Think of hospitals. From the hospital here, there were hospitals all the way through. But museums, no. There were no museums before modernism, before the nation. Well, of course, the Mesopotamian king called Nabonidus had a princess who had a collection of all things. But that's something else. Or the Arvazapura period when the, this, this, um, the, the boat tree came to Sri Lanka, the rudder of the, the ship was put in, in, a, in a special building in the Arvazapura period. Those are, that's not museology as such, that's keeping memory, of course. Let's not go into the theory of the idea of museum, but museum as an institution is a modern thing. It's an artificial thing and it came into being with the idea of the nation. That's the most important thing to understand. The nation, the moment I bring in nation, it has the under, it under, it brings in the next concept, nationalism. Nation, nationalism, identity and the museum. So, when you go to Kalambu Museum, you know all these, because those, those objects were not meant to be at the National Museum, no? They were meant to be somewhere, somebody else took them. They say all displays, they are orphans. What you see in, 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 the, in the museum is orphan, displaced, like what we did to the minorities in this country at some point, displaced people, and then put into the same thing in National Museum. So, first question. Can you put that idea of displacement to these works here? I'm not going to answer to you like this. That's why you should be coming here again and again and again. That's why you should be coming until you die for the contemporary museum of modern art to ask that question. Because I have, I know this uh, wonderful statement, we'll come to this. Walter Benjamin, you know this guy, it's Walter Benjamin. But believe me, he's a great guy. So Walter Benjamin once said this wonderful statement. There is no document of civilization which is not, at the same time, a document of barbarism. 
there is no document of civilization which is not at the same time a document of barbarism. So for me, the first museum of modern, modern and contemporary art in Sri Lanka is a document of civilization. So if 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 Walter Benjamin is saying us something, what is it? How do we make sense of this statement in this particular in this particular idea of the of, of this museum? Because you know, I'm very proud of this museum and the very idea because it also has a bit of nationalism in me. Because we are the only country in this part of the world who doesn't have a modern museum for modern art. Isn't that so charming? Everybody else, the the Nepalis, uh, the Bangladeshi. The Indians and the Pakistan, they all have national museums, major ones. But we are supposed to have been the most literate society in the country, all these blah blah things that we are very proud to say, like, you know, we never had a modern art museum. So then I'm very proud of it. So it's a civilizational document. But then it can also be a document of barbarism. We'll come to that point later. I'm, I'm doing these things because I want you to. Think of how important a museum of contemporary and modern art is. Okay, this is an art museum. So, an art museum, like every museum, has a site of investigation. So, if an art museum is a site of investigation, what does this, this show at this particular point, what does it investigate? For me, it, it, you, you might think it, it yeah, yeah, curators are claiming that they are investigating a particular history of this country through taking this umbrella, most beautiful poetic line, line and you know, putting a particular, a particular kind of artist. You all have to think of ask these things. Who are, why are these artists here together? You know? And, 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 and what, is, what are they investigating by being together? Or are they not investigating anything, only telling something? By telling something, and I said telling or narrating something, that's the word the curators want to use. They're narrating the story, isn't that? Yeah, that's the word they, they have used there. So, what is it narrating? Why is it not telling? Why, why is it narrating? Anyway, we'll come to I'm not going to give you any, any you know, this is the blame I get from my students. I never give any answers, I keep confusing. Something. Okay, anyway. <coughs> And then in telling the story, if it, uh, as it, is it being very transparent? Right? The reason is, you know, the very story, which is important, it, is, it, is, it, is it, it is told by a particular kind of artist, including myself. But, but if you really, well, now I'm coming to the experiment, if you really go carefully through it, you will see it is also telling the story from a different perspective that we did not see before, especially in the works of the Alai uh, poetry books. You know, the first time I'm seeing it, and I looked at the 1983 uh, page and the 84, and I want to see like what is more inside in it. You know, 83 is a crucial uh, year that I became I realized that I'm not a Buddhist you know, kind of year. Anyway, so point one: What does it invest? In? All right. The next time you go, and then. How should a museum think of the of the concept of pleasure, fun, engagement? How does this museum, arrangement of this museum, like you know, when you, I enter here, this place is very bookish kind of. Thing. You have images of books, and you have books here, and then you have prints here, and photographs here, and these are books. Unless you turn that right, it's all reproductive. Reproductive. You can reproduce everything here as original as it is, except that one. You see what I mean? Like, if it is an original work of art, but it's a book, it's, it is an edition. You can always have, have an original. But you see my point, no? It doesn't have the, the fetish aspect of, of that we associate with, with art. So you enter into a, a particular kind of space made meaningful by the, by the curator. So then you can also so so what does it do as in terms of pleasure, fun, engagement, knowledge, and what does it show in your first gut experience as you walk in? Actually, you know, when I was here for the opening, 
I went back home like it's too much work. But now when I came this morning, I said, no, not too much. This is our thing. I think maybe it was too many people. Okay. My point is, I want you to think of how does it, what does it show about it itself in the, in, in, in the name of showing something. By showing what kind of a knowledge is it, is, it, is it making here. One thing is, is that you know it is it is not taking us to this original artwork as such in this first uh, first room. And then so that's what, what this museum uh, uh, for and what is an art art museum. Then my second question that I want you to think is, what is the context of this museum, this exhibition, this museum? What is the context? Or what is the exhibitionary landscape that made this idea possible here. I want you to think about it very much from a regional and a global perspective. One thing, you know, soon after 2009, like, we entered into a particular kind of exhibitionary landscape giving rights, like, for example, I was instrumental in this coming out with the now failed Colombo Art Biennale. It's an, you know, and then the Colombo Sport, then the art festival, then Linda began this academy of design. You know, it, is, it was not restricted to this couple of art galleries. All of a sudden, and the theatre had its own international artist workshops. And it's, we, were given, right, we were creating an exhibitionary landscape here. And the artist from Japan was coming here. We were going to Japan and all that. So it is from that, we are thinking now of, of consolidating all that experience into a single entity, institution called Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art. This is why I said I'm very proud and happy about it, but you also have to be, if you love someone, you have to be very critical of that person, no? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Sorry, I take it back. <laughs> well, Shakespeare would be very mad with me because Shakespeare has been telling us, you know, you have to have this honest lies in life, you know. Well, I'm not going to into that in honest lies, you know, what I'm honest. Avanka Burki, if you don't have honest lies in your vocabulary, you're not going to have a happy marriage or having even even a good friendship. Isn't that true with you? Okay, tell me. <laughs> so, yeah, to that. so the exhibitionary landscape. So that this institute is coming all of a sudden. Say like you know, in this is this was one of my major major critic of myself and theater, like you know, we do all these things and what happens to these things afterwards. Now luckily, you know, and, and happily that, you know, Shamini has been tapping all those uh, energies, like you, know, you have Mayuri's or, no. but anyway, those, how to call credit? Yeah, and all these people that, you know, work with theater. And, and all of a sudden we have, uh, this whole exhibition and landscape is being converging into this, this exhibition and possibly in, in, in the future to this, this idea. So we have all the, my point is this, because we have been, all of us here, you have many key players for that in this room now, given rise to this idea, this thing of a, a wider exhi exhibition a landscape and you know, on that landscape we have the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art, beginning with uh, the story. And what is the global impact of uh, how do you place this in a regional and global thing? It's the same. What is the aggregate? What's the game? What is the exhibitionary landscape making this idea very possible here? It's the Kochi Biennale and all these exhibitions happening in India, Pakistan, and Karachi Biennale, and all the Indian. There is that, you know, it is like, you know, we cannot go into future without an entity like this. All right. Any questions about these ideas before I go into it? Except the honest lies thing, but so let me read just that. Could you elaborate a little more on how a national museum becomes also a nationalist? Oh, well, national museums are necessarily nationalist. It cannot be otherwise because it imagines a nation from a particular point of view. In this case, as you enter the National Museum in Colombo, you are confronted with this huge Buddha statue. And it is not presented at, at, as an archaeological or a museological object. It is presented as a religious object. Because that Buddha, as a museum object, archaeological object, it has its own history. 
of uh, uh, through time. Because this that particular Buddha statue was until 1965 was inside, and then Ananda Guru came, became the Sangha in the museum, and he is a nationalist himself. He put it on to the front, and then he is presenting as a religious object. So, so when in a multi multi cultural place you have a Buddhist image as a Buddhist religious symbol. So everybody who is coming through this gate is confronted by this, this authority of, of a Buddhist symbol. I'm not saying it should be changed, but it should be presented as a museum and an archaeological object. And then a religious object. See my point? And then why is that? And, and imagining that, see, I'm not, uh, uh, well, at least this is my contradiction. I don't think nationalist thought, nationalism is necessarily, or patriotism is necessarily a bad word. Nationalism is problematic when you think of your idea of nation in the exclusion of the other. In terms of a, of a superior nationalist identity that you claim to have, like the Nazi nationalism. Nationalism is problematic when you think of it as a superior position that is very peculiar to you and your group. No, if you think of nationalism or a nationalist thought as something very civilizational that is related to the temporality of the landscape of a subject. Let me explain that. We all believe we are more civilized than the Vandas no? or the Aborigines. Don't tell me no. We do, we do. I know this. Shut up. That's why you are wearing like that. That's why you are speaking English. That's why you are asking those very intelligent questions. Maybe you are not articulate. That's how we have been taught. That's how we have been made to believe. That we are civilized. The very word civilization the words exist because there is an uncivilized people. No, there's a hierarchy which I don't, I think, yes, not how I think. No, 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 none of us think like that. Because I am a critical person, that means this is, oh, oh, sorry, isn't this how I've been thinking? This is what it's called critically engaging with yourself. I didn't think like that. All of a sudden, I realized, okay, this is how I've been thinking, though. This is how we portray Vatas, like you're wearing a uh, and this is how we portray the other. And my point is this. Uh, the civilization, the idea of civilization is rooted in the not nomadic, not hunting gathering, you are, have one place on land. That's 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 the point I'm right taking you. So when, so the nationalist thought is is a way that you think of yourself in relation to a particular place on earth and the memories. So that's so that's why you call the temporality of the landscape is at the root of the nationalist thinking. That's why I, I you cannot question that. Nobody in this world can think outside of the temporal experience of the temporality of the landscape. It just to come to that point. Forget me. My path was like, you know. But hunting gatherings, hunting gathering people, nomadic people are quote unquote less civilized than us because they are not caught in, in, in this, this idea of the civilized person's notion of thinking herself through the idea of the temporality of the landscape. Why I keep not just landscape? Temporality of the landscape. That means your experience with the landscape is not only in your head, but also outside, but not totally outside. So think of the travels you make abroad in what you take with you. You're taking a memory of your enemy. Anyway. So nationalist thought from that way, it's not a problem. So I, I use that, you know. Now because there are, like you said, the problem is that if you think of nationalist thought in that way, that is exactly why you cannot go to the east of this country and use archaeology to displace a Muslim village claiming that this was a Buddhist land before you guys came. The very nationalist argument does not allow you to do that because we know the, the people say wherever they are, they have been living there for two generations or three generations, their temporary landscape is exactly there and you cannot use archaeological argument or any other argument to take them away from because this has been a, there are Buddhist ruins. I'm talking as an archaeologist. I know this is happening. This is how I am. Don't tell me that archaeological truths are more important, more scientific, and more valid than sociological truths. Or legal truths, or other truths. These are all disciplines that we made in the head. No more. We are not talking about museology anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Exactly. The precise the point is that you cannot talk of museums without talking about any of these things. The, the reason that we slide it into this kind of a serious issue. It's because that is what museums are. That is what museums can do. See, all of a sudden I came out with the museology and I'm talking about the major problem in this country, the role of archaeology and history in racist thinking. Okay, point one. 
I think that would be more interesting. All these data are also archaeological data. But if you're going to see archaeological data or memory data as ethnic data, then the nationalist problem is, uh, this, this, this racist problem is always be there. But my point is this. <laughs> my point is this. This is important. It's like, it's like you know, archaeological claims about a place is not superior to than to sociological truth. Now you see, I don't want to go into that detail, but I have to talk about more, more, more museum thing. Do I have time? Yeah. So what is the global context of this? And the global context is, is once again that, you know, we are all linked to this global context whether we like it or not, since the late 1990s in terms of contemporary art from the Fukuoka Asian Art Museum, APT3, and Chamini coming in 1994, and, you know, and all this. And then, the other question, so we ask what are, what are art museums, what they do, and it's linked to the nation. And we link this thing, and now I want you to take your idea into the, what, an, what can exhibitions do? What is this exhibition is actually doing in a way? So it shows, it shows as an occasion where the spectator meet and a culture of experimentation, or experimental culture, and collectives. Just look at all these work here. The way she put together, you know, there is a certain kind of grouping by you know. So in the, each grouping is an experimental culture. So the spectator is taken into that, that experimental culture. You don't meet it anywhere else. It is where you meet it in a, in a, in a contemporary art museum. You don't see, uh, come across that experimental culture in the National Museum. It's in the contemporary and modern art museum that we can do. And, and more importantly, and more equally importantly, an exhibition can, can make all kinds of, or other kinds of uh, associations outside of the nation, outside of the state, outside of the national culture. This is the other important thing that this exhibition is already doing. It is making associations. Think of this room itself. Making associations outside of the um, the national, the state, and the national culture. At the same time, this is what you have to ask, uh, Shamini. At the same time, as for me, it does not try to be universal. One of the most criminal things that we do to anything is to try to make it universal. You know, universal ideas are necessarily problematic. They are they are oppressive elements in the end, like the world heritage concept, which I am dealing at every every day as an, an archaeologist. These universal concepts are oppressive concepts because whoever owns and power, who owns the concept will control you. But this exhibition, as for me, is not trying to be universal. It's very interesting, very important. It's, it's not even trying to be national culture as such. While it is the, about the national culture at, at its most meaningful level. Alright, now I come to the difficult question. I told you about the uh, Walter Benjamin thing, no? There is no document of civilization which is not, at the same time, a document of barbarism. I like this paradox. So, how are we taking part in this barbarism, barbarism aspect of this, this document? I'm not going to tell you how. You have to find them. Uh, in order to get into this, I have, in order to get into this, he al already took me into that. It's like you have to see the, the history of showing in this country, which is highly rooted in the history of history of the colony, history of uh, colonials. You know, it is not outside of that. You see, like idea of the world heritage, idea of the world museum. These are all colonial ideas. You know, they like the British Museum as a museum of the entire world. How could you even think of a museum of the entire world? It's because they were colonial powers. So, and 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 then they collect all these objects and they put it now in our museum. They create a particular kind of showing, and because and then within the colonial concept, and this leads us takes us to this inevitable, extremely difficult concept of history and the condition of modernity in Sri Lanka. So, you know, and history of, of exhibition. Yeah. So, what 
does that his how does that history of of of, of colonialism in this country see, doing in this exhibition? I tell you one thing: if you go down south to southern temples, you see the history of colonialism coming playing in the uh, in southern temples with Queen Victoria's uh, image at the entrance to put. Uh, Buddhist shrines, you know, and then you have the unicorn and the lion, standing lion, guarding the, the temple. But remember, you might think it's total colonial, but it's also not total colonial. It is also very ancient idea of lions guarding the temple, but this lion has a new friend, that's the unicorn. So it's, the idea is very old, at the same time very new. So my dear people, what, how is it happening here? How is the idea of very new has become very old at the same time? You, you, you see, it? for me, anyway, I don't want to influence you with my bias thinking. <laughs> and, and from this, having talked this, you know, critical aspects of museum, I'm asking, I'm asking uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. Can we do a post-colonial museum practice? What do I mean by post-colonial is, is simple like this, it's simple like this. Can we do a museology that takes on the subordinity of, of us in relation to the mega, okay. If you take Venice Biennale, Sri Lanka is dumb. Sri Lanka speaks as artists so much, but nobody hears it. Subordinity is not that subordinate cannot speak. They can speak, but nobody listens. Their language is not heard or understood by anyone. That's why subordinate. So in that sense, Shamini and everybody here, Linda, even though you have built this big building, we are subordinates in the, in the world of uh, contemporary art. Nobody hears us, our voice. And thank you, um, thank you very much. You put in this together. You see my point, subordinate, you don't have to be poor. You don't have to be a village, uh, you know, someone in, in the body. It is that you speak some, you keep saying something, but no, nobody hears it and your language is not understood by others. Then that's a subordinate position. This is what Dyson Stewart has been arguing. You don't have to be poor. Right now, for me, they're all subordinate. Even though we think that we are great artists and great, you know, been to Oxford or Cambridge. Nobody gives shit about what we say. But we have to make it heard. And so that's part. This is why I like about this show as well, you know, subordinate. Can we do a museology that works on the complexity of nation and nationalism? This is this exhibition is already doing. How do we continue this? The complexity of nation and nationalism. It's not about nationalism and nation. The complexity of so you. This is what I, I you know, This is why I said about the idea of of nationalism and patriotism. You cannot just oppose this concept. It doesn't make sense. They're not going to go away because you better understand. Because my way of understanding through our is. Nationalist thought is that is why we call uh, we are civilized according to me, not just me. No, Pantha Chatterjee has argued about this in, in, in this manner, right? And then my second question is: Can we do a museology that addresses the that addresses the issues pertaining to the incompletion of Sri Lankan or South Asian modernity or postmodernity, which I call para modernity? Do we think that we have completed a modernity in Sri Lanka? Are we a totally, fully modern? No, has, is there any modern society? But if you read someone like Judith Butler, according to her, which I believe, what you've done, done was, we have domesticated religion in the modern. If religion was an outside institution controlling us, what we did was in the modern period of taking it to your home and we have domesticated religion. We have ne we have ne we'll never get rid of it. And, and all these things happening in the world, how the religions have become so powerful. My dear people, Boris Johnson, one huge margin in, in Chamini, back home, <laughs> the right wing, in Sri Lanka, everywhere. How do you make sense of it? How do you make sense of that? Where is the project of modernism, modernity? We have never completed that. If you have not completed the project of modernity, postmodernity is nowhere. And this is why I call paramodernism. How do we understand our paramodernity here, right? How can we do a museum for contemporary art and art practice? Yeah. A museology on that. Uh, then my second question is, yeah, this is a, a museology that reflects upon itself. No problem. We 
glory to him. Uh, a museology that re-inscribes the notions of citizenship and, and democracy now. The notions of citizenship and democracy right now. How can we do a museology that addresses this problem? Because, you know, do you all feel part of a, this larger national? Do you, do, I always feel like I'm an outsider again. Within my you know, nobody, there's, there's no one to uh, go on to when you have a, the, right, a good program in fine arts education. There's no place to go. Okay. So, how do you uh, in citizenship and democracy now? What does democracy mean? For, but you know very well now in this country, if you follow democracy to the letter, the minority problem will never be solved, so to speak. How come the third 60 percent of the people in this country are Sinhalese and Buddhists from the south, and they will always have a majority in the parliament? Parliamentary majority, majoritarian democracy is not going to solve the problem. But we still need democracy. So this is the place where will be artists will be addressing these issues intuitively. You get my argument. I know we believe in the parliament majority. Well, this is not me. Like you know, this is why Noam Chomsky has been attacking this whole idea of the parliamentary majoritarianist democracy. It's not going to. So then how do we envision this issue? So how are artists envisioning the idea of just, not the justice system, the idea of just in these words. Yukti Pilipanda Adhasa, Yukti Dharma, not the Yukti of Pasadena and Rajya Kramya, but the, the idea of Yukti, idea of just. How are they dealing with it here? So how, so idea of uh, citizenship and democracy, how, in what kind of institutions will help us to talk about these things? This is the place. These are the institutions. The museum, are the, according to Donald Preciosi, museum is the brain of the earth. Actually, it is where you know, all this serious. This museology is one of the toughest disciplines. That's why I could never produce a single good museologist for the past twenty years. They are all bad. They are my students. They are in the museum. I could never teach them museology because they don't get it as as this. It's such a good, you know, we could, one reason was, but I could not, was that we did not have a good museum, a museum of modern and contemporary art. We always had only the National Museum. You cannot teach museology through the National Museum of um, in Columbia. <clears throat> All right. My last and final important question is, can we do a museology that sees Europe not as the primary habitus of modern? Can we do a museology? Can we think of an art practice? Can we think of exhibition that does not see? This is a covered criticism of this show also. Can we, we can we do a museology that sees that sees Europe not as the primary habitus of modern? This is not my question. This is also uh, Deepak Chakrabarti, this modern historian, raised this question. Can we think of a museum? A modern museum that does not see Europe, does, does not see Europe as the primary habitus of, of modern. How do we claim our own modernity? That's all I have to say. I think that's plenty. You can ask me question. Or did I make it everything confusing? Or maybe I made it so clear. So, but I, my, I have just one thing that I'm trying to instill. Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art are such an important, important institute. And you need them. And you have to engage with it again and again to make it meaningful. You know? This is what it, I could have given you a very flowery you know, speech or presentation of the exhibition. But no, it is much more engaging processes required from you guys, from the general audience of this, uh, for this museum to be a really meaningful place. So this get from, from the museum, you can give rise to good art training and art education and everything. We will be, this is, we will be the space that will question, and already these are art works, the art works that Charmini has put together, there is questioning everything that I have said here, the idea of citizenship, idea of na nationhood, idea of history, idea of power, authenticity, everything is questioned in this world. All right. I'm not going to take you through. No, Chamni will do that. 